<laughs> now, have you ever thought about trying to change your partner's annoying behaviour? Mm. Our next guest may be able to help us deal with some of these. You have a little something on your face. <laughs> you had men hands. He's a weak gifter. She's a two-face. She's got the Jimmy legs. She's a virgin. He's poor. <gasps> She's got everything I've always wanted in another human being. Except for the walkie. She eats her peas one at a time. <laughs> she just took credit for my salad. He's a male bimbo. He's a bimbo. She's one of these low talkers. You know, because he's a high talker. Bit of a close talker. She can't hear very well out of her left ear. She's bald. She's bald. He's a bad breaker upper. She went out with Newman. He's like a Sven Jolly. She's too tan. She's too good. She wasn't my type. She just <laughs> dislikes me so much. <laughs> some say... It's irresistible. Oh, some say you can't change the people you love, but live coach Jamin Fraser says you can to get the relationship you deserve, and Jamin joins us now. Nice to see you. Thanks very much for having me. Now, don't they say how many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, <laughs> but the light bulb want, has to want to change. Isn't that the kind of same case here? How do you make people change? Sure. Look, I think the old adage, don't try and change the one you love, is actually the worst relationship advice ever given. Why? Well, I think if you don't find a way to deal with the things that annoy you, stuff gets between you and you grow apart. It's destructive to your relationship. Little things become big things and this clean space between you gets polluted and intimacy is lost. So not only is it uh, necessary, sometimes it's essential to change the people you love. But what if they're deal-breaker habits? If they're deal-breaker habits? Well, how do they get there in the first place? They yeah. didn't start out as deal-breaker habits. Mm. Little things always become big things because people don't want to touch it. They don't know how to improve. They don't know how to have the difficult conversations. They don't know how to clean the space when things get offensive or upsetting mm. or annoying. And, uh, and things escalate and deteriorate. All right, let's change our partners. How do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, there are some work, there's some work you gotta do to earn the right first. Uh, when I, uh, this book was on the editor's desk and she, she read the title, Leverage, How to Change mm. the People You Love, and she's like, I don't like this guy, I don't like this title. This sounds aggressive, it sounds inappropriate. Um, but she emailed me after reading the first few chapters and she said, Jamie, I get it, this is a love story. I, people suffer because they don't know how to do this. You've put together something that's really clear and, and it does start with earning the right. You've got to change yourself a long time before you, you go anywhere near trying to address the things in your partner. It, it all starts with you. So, mm. so what, what is that leverage then? Well, as small as you like. Um, it's, it's, hey, can you address this thing that annoys me? If you yeah. don't, well, here's 15 things that I could do that escalates this situation for you. I don't want to, but this is important to me, so I've got leverage. I've got stuff that could make your life difficult. OK, so... so yeah, I was going to say, what about all those little things that are cute at the beginning and then over time they get annoyed? I mean, how, how can... How does someone go about, I suppose, stopping someone from snoring or, or for forgetting to take the bins out or for kind of walking past rubbish on the ground? <laughs> I think this is, this is where it's at. It's, it's the little things. And there's a, a line in my book, I think my favourite line, be clear or be quiet. Mm. So there comes a point where you go, that actually does annoy me. And, and you're leaving the bins out or you're snoring. It causes me grief. It repels me from you. If I pretend that's not true, then I'm lying to myself and you. So at some point, you go, this is important to me and, and it has to change. If it doesn't, the implications are dire to our relationship. OK, so for an example, how would you then use leverage to get your partner to stop storing, snoring? Would you go on a sex ban or something? I don't know. What sort of leverage well, would I mean, you that's use? that's where people go. People go straight to sex or, or even to divorce. That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. And there are there a are hundred things you can do. Okay, give us three. Give us... Um, right, no, no dinner. You can cook dinner for yourself tonight. Oh. Um, uh, you know how you said you wanted to go out with the boys? Uh, you're not. Uh, that's, that's not happening. Oh. Um, that, that plan we had to go out for dinner, I'm not coming. I don't, I don't want to go. Like, in my own relationship, the simple things my wife does, like, if she doesn't come home and look at me with love in her eyes, i like, there's something wrong. Yeah. So her simple decision to go, I'll just give you ice. And I go, hang on, I, I can't deal with that. I, I need your connection, so what's going on? What do I need to change? What's happening that's creating you to withdraw from me? So it, it, it can bring some skill to the game. Have some fun with this. It, it's not just big, broad brush strokes. Little things become big things if you don't deal with them. And your ability to be an adult and just go, look, uh, I, I am valuable in this relationship. I'm here because I want to be, not because I have to be. 
So, all right, if you don't treat me the way I deserve, well, here's and what's that, going to And that's the key, now. right? That's the love that story the... you're talking about, the love story with yourself and, and, and loving yourself enough to have boundaries and standards and to stick by your values and, and, and speak up when something isn't in alignment with the way you're living. Uh, of course, my whole work is in helping people overcome insecurity and that's mm. where this starts. Yeah. If you come into a relationship needy and desperate, you've got no leverage. Mm. You, you've got bluff and, yep. and nagging. You're looking for someone else to, to, to fill the gap when you should be well, doing exactly. it yourself. Exactly. You can't ever afford to hold a line with them in case they leave. No. Mm. But if you're, you know that you're valuable, delightful, then you can, you've got plenty of stuff to play. You've got leverage. You go. You've got, you've leverage. got, you've got leverage. a hand. <laughs> you might not need it. That's it. If I bring any of these up, I'm going to look in the mirror first. Jamin's new book is called Leverage and is out now. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really Thanks. appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, Good on you. Now, next up, our first glimpse.